Hey, what's going on guys? Dr. J here, physical therapist, orthopedic specialist, and I'm here to discuss hip flexor tightness today. Uh, I think there was a couple people that went to through Marlena and then now they're, now they're kind of requesting hip flexor tightness. Um, at all, if you guys have any questions specifically, like you guys feel free to message me directly. Um, maybe I'll even put out a link um, if you guys wanted to do like a consultation. Really happy to just sit down with you and discuss everything. But here, you know, what we'll use is we'll use a couple things. Like you really don't even need a band. I'm gonna show you a couple band variations. If you're having any hip flexor tightness, this is something that I've actually specialized in. I've actually done a, a, a ton of in services on hip flexor tightness. A lot more, more common in women, more common in women over the age of like 30. Um, and I would say a lot of women, like they, they just stretch the crazy out of their hip flexor. And maybe that's not even the solution. Like let's, let's say, what if this is the muscle here and what if the muscle is already lengthened? And if that muscle is already lengthened, it has that perception of tightness and you decide to stretch it, guess what's going to happen? You're making the problem worse. Okay. So what you can do is you can try to shorten it up. And in order to shorten up your hip flexors, you got to understand the mechanics. The hip flexor attaches from L1, your lumbar spine, all the way down to L5, attaches to the inside portion called the medial portion of your hip. Okay. So not only does that bring your knee up into hip flexion, it does not only does that, it also side bends you to the right side, especially if I'm using the right side. So if you understand mechanics, right, you can get rid of hip flexor pain very quickly, okay? Right side bends as well as right hip flexion, that's how you shorten up the hip flexor, right? So easy enough, like one of the easiest things is just make sure you feel the inside of your abs, okay? You can just start off with just right side bend, right hip flexion, easy enough, easy, okay? Two, and three, and four, Okay, this is not just aerobics. This is not just something that's just simple. Actually try to right side bend and right hip flexion at the same time. You'll really actually start to feel that in your abs. And it's not just your abs, but it's also your hip flexion at the same time. Okay, then I'm gonna switch, okay? Just break it down. Left side bend, that's one, okay? Plus left hip flexion, okay? Left hip flexion plus left side bend, that's one. Left hip flexion, two, and you can put it together. Three, four, and five. Okay, contract that hip flexor. Six, seven, okay, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so a lot of you guys, if you're starting to complain of tightness in that hip, okay, you're probably doing a good thing. You're probably actually saying, man, my hip flexor, you don't need to stretch it out, okay? Some people will benefit from that, like stretching out the hip flexor, pulling that leg back, okay? Very classic hip flexor stretch. Let's not focus on that today. Seen it before a million times on Google. Let's do some things that are different, okay? So now we're gonna go into end range hip flexion. You have to grade this. This is a pretty high chair. If you need a little stool, that's better. We're gonna go into end range hip flexion. So what you do is you get your foot onto the, onto the chair, and what you're going to do is you're going to tighten up your abs before you even lift off, and you're just going to call it, be called an end range lift off. One, and down. Two, and down. Three, good. Don't lean back. This is cheating, right? Leaning back with it, okay? Lean into it. Tighten up your abs. Four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. Perfect. Okay. So if you're having any squat pain, like if you go squat down and you feel like a hip pinch or you feel like your hip flexors are kind of like sore, go into an end range lift off. Okay. So I'm doing the left side. And easy enough too, what you do is on the stance leg that's on the floor, squeeze that tush. So squeeze the tush on the right side and then lift off. And you feel even firmer. You feel like a little more stable, too. Okay? Three. Don't let it go of the right glute contraction. Four. Five. Six. Get that knee up high towards the ceiling. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Okay. So if you wanted to make that harder, I'm not going to do a full amount of repetitions. Go long lever. Long lever is you kick that leg out. Same thing goes, 
This is that now you're lifting up harder against gravity and the lever's a lot longer, okay? So that's how that would look, okay? That'd be an end range lift up there, okay? For some of you guys that feel hip flexor pain while you're sitting, give you a couple options. One of them would just be this. Use your hands, okay? Put it right against your mid thigh and then press up, hold, okay? You can do a core strengthening exercise right at your desk, okay? Two, okay, you should feel that in your abdominals. You should feel that in the crease of your front hip. Three, okay, I'm just gonna do five reps, five second holds. Four, and then five. Okay, if you do that correctly, you shouldn't just be feeling it in the crease of your hips. You should be feeling that in your abs. To make sure of that, what you can do is you can also extend. And what you do is you can like round and tighten up your abdominals and then lift up, okay? So if you do this, you're shortening up those hip flexors again. And then if you do this, this would be a little bit of cheating right here. It's just slumping, right? It's a lot easier to get that knee up versus sit up straight. Because when you sit up straight, that shortens up the hip flexor again, okay? So I'm gonna do five second hold, five repetitions. Ready and go. One, okay? Sit up straight, don't slump. Two, okay, if it gets too hard, then you can slump. Three, four, and last one, and five. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good. Usually if you like test out like your squat or something, usually it feels like a lot looser. Okay, specifically again, when you understand the mechanics, hip flexors attach from your iliac crest, L1 to L5, to the medial portion of your hip, okay? Hip flexor tightness doesn't often go away with stretching the depth out of your hip flexors. They might already be lengthened, specifically with, um, with any woman or men out there that are, are really gung-ho with like yoga and stuff, stretching the crazy out of your hip flexor is probably doing more harm than good. So try to shorten it up and actually see how it feels. I've gone so many times through isometrics and how isometrics is like, you know, push with like a five second hold, that's an isometric on how that reduces pain significantly, okay? So, a couple of You guys can still hear me, I kind of fall over the Nope. The audio left, the audio's gone. Reason why I like is the audio still not working? It's gone, still, it's gone. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me? Nope, not better. Not yet. Why not? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's like when I get a call in, then, um, well, well, I apologize. You know, it, this is not going to be the most perfect recording, but I already went through a couple different principles that you guys need to understand. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple little floor variations. Um, another way to really decrease the tone and the tightness in your hip flexor is by strengthening the other muscles, which is the glutes. If you squeeze the death out of your glutes, it goes through a principle called reciprocal inhibition. Squeezing your glutes will essentially calm down and, and, and basically it'll, the resting length of your hip flexors will actually decrease and you will feel less tension in the front of your hip. Okay, so I'll show you a couple variations. When I'm lying on the floor, okay, one of the, re one of the things I can do is just a single leg bridge, right? So I can do this, hold that position, keep your toes up, okay? And squeeze your right glute, hold that position. And then if you wanted to, if it's bilateral hip flexor tightness, you can also push against your thigh and then press. So you're actually pressing your knee into your hand. And this is pretty tough. It's pretty tough to hold this position. I'm gonna hold this here for like 15 seconds. You can do a minute if you want to. All right, we go five more seconds, five, four, 
three, two, one, and then rest. Okay. Then the opposite side, squeeze the glutes on the left side. If you have left hip flexor tightness, squeeze that up, hold that. That's a single leg bridge isometric. And if you wanted to, then you can also apply the right hand onto your thigh here, and then your knee presses against your palm. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good. Okay, so you could also do bridges with marching. That's one version of contracting your hip flexors as you're squeezing your glutes. And if you want to make that a little bit harder, then you can also add in a chair, right? So now your legs are higher up, so it makes it harder to maintain that position. You're going to feel that more in your hamstrings, and that's a good thing, specifically to decrease the tone and the tightness in your hip flexors, okay? Four, five, six, seven, and you can also resist, you can use your hand, eight, nine, and 10, okay? All right, so that's pretty much all I had for today.